Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Chelsea Perspective. Today, we're going to talk about Martin van der Voort, whether he's good enough for Chelsea and why Chelsea Football Club should sign him. But before we continue, please smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and more importantly, click on the bell notification button so you don't miss anything. So, let's get into it. Uh, today I have with me uh, Matt from What White Charles Podcast. Matt is here to tell us why Chelsea Football Club should sign Martin van der Voort. Matt, welcome back to Chelsea Perspective. Thank you for having me on once again. It's a pleasure to be back on. Um, love to come on this channel. It's a very good channel, very unique, and gives a gives one of the best Chelsea perspectives, if I'll give a little pun, to yep. all Chelsea fans. Yeah, that, that's a funny way to say it. Chelsea perspective at the same time saying the name of the channel. Anyway, so Matt, uh, Matt why, why did you scout Martin van der Voort and why? Um, well, obviously, we, we, we do have a little bit of an issue with, obviously, we have Mendy as the first choice goalkeeper, um, which is a good in the league games. But obviously, we have the issue of a second choice goalkeeper. We have currently on the books, we now have three goalkeepers. We have Marcus Bettinelli, who is going to just be that Willy Caballero, third choice goalkeeper. He'll play only when there's injuries. Not really going to get a game. He's just there for cover. But then you've also got Kepa. Now, Kepa, we all admit, was supposed to be our third choice, first choice goalkeeper. He's supposed to be the man that is... He's, he's, the, he's supposed to be the man that brings Chelsea on and takes us in the future. But unfortunately he hasn't stepped up to the plate and while he's doing what you well okay as a second choice goalkeeper as a 72 million pound player and a player going into his prime i don't think he want he will want to stay here for much longer being a second choice goalkeeper so i think there will be an opportunity that we will need to get someone in to not only act as a second choice goalkeeper but when mendy gets on to the point where He's going to have to take a step back and come out of the first team. We've got someone that needs that can step in and become the next goalkeeper for Chelsea Football Club. Yeah, great, great point right there. I think uh, you you could argue we have a big problem in the goalkeeping department, and we have to sort it out as soon as possible. One of the problems being that Mendy will most definitely leave for Afcon, and then we have just Marcus Bettinelli and uh, uh, Kepa Arizabalaga, of which we explained why Kepa wouldn't want to remain the second choice goalkeeper for a long time. He would want to go to a place where he'll be starting games. But that's by the way. Coming to uh, Martin uh, van der Voort. Now, he's established himself as a first choice keeper. What club does he play again? I know we've talked about him a little bit. Yeah, he plays for Genk in Belgium. Uh, he's, and he's, is, he, is he, isn't he, okay, isn't he their first choice keeper? He is now their first choice goalkeeper. He established himself early into last season and now he's had a whole season in goal uh, first choice for Genk. And is now the fact that his second, the previous first choice goalkeeper has now left because he can't get any game time. That's it. And, and don't you think that will also be the case, the case from, uh, uh, from Martin if he comes to Chelsea, he would want to be starting games and he's just 19. And at 19, playing very often is very important to the development of the player and haven't established himself as the first choice keeper at Gank, it, it's a difficult ask. Even if we want him, we'd have to convince him that, okay, that we, we will then assure him of his development as a young player. So, but let's, we'll get to that. So, can you look at it? Let's assume you're Martin. Van der Voort right now, from your perspective as a player, will it be a move if Chelsea goes for him? Will it be something that will work for him? I know for the club, yes. But for him as a player, do you think it's an okay, will be an okay, a good move for him? Yeah, I mean, it, it, if, I, if I was to put myself in his shoes, 
I'd look at it as a massive step up. Um, you're going to a club that is a huge club that if you can establish yourself in the future as a first choice goalkeeper, you are going to not not just make a lot of money for yourself, but you're going to have a very successful career. Chelsea is a football club where we are constantly winning trophies. He can add multiple trophies to his um, his into into his cabinet. He can win a lot of stuff for Chelsea Football Club. He can also develop as a career. Chelsea have one of the best youth academies in the world right now, so they have they they have the ability to take his progression and move him into the path that he wants to be. Um, I also think in terms of, yes, he won't play as much. But again, as you said, with the AFCON thing, you look at Mendy and you go, you've, you've got six weeks where you will definitely play some game time um, in the first team because Mendy will be off AFCON. Otherwise, you've got cup games where you've got, rather than the Belgium League, you only have one cup match. You have the FA Cup, you have the Carabao Cup, and you possibly have European competition as well, which Chelsea should be in constantly. So I think it's it's an opportunity for Chelsea to for Martin Van der Voort to, to take a step up to a big club and still get a relatively good game time because don't forget as a 19 year old it's different for a goalkeeper that is a time where you can afford not to have too much game time and learn and then when you're about 24, 25 that's when you should start getting the game time to to consistently to really improve and prove yourself so he's got that time to learn at a big club I, I understand the point you made about the size of the club, as in Chelsea is, is a big club. But it, if it comes to Chelsea right now, you still have Marcus Bertinelli, you still have Kepari Zubilaga, even at the time uh, in January when Mendy will leave for Afghan. He still has a problem because I don't think the club will start him over Bertinelli, who's experienced, who's experienced the Premier League also. So he'll still be on the bench, even in the absence of Mendy. He will find it hard to get again time. But let's look beyond whether he would think coming to Chelsea would be a good idea or not and move to this question right now, Matt. Do you think Martin van der Voort is good enough to play for Chelsea? Um, I, I think as a second-choice goalkeeper, I think he's good enough now. Um, and I think the the potential behind this kid, um, Belgium as the national team rates him very highly and they are carefully looking at tracking his progress because they believe he is the heir to Thibaut Courtois. And the same club, he, Genk, right? Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's what you've got to remember. Genk, uh, Genk and a lot, there's a number of Belgium teams and elect as well. They produce very good talent. I mean, I was I was searching up the list of just endless talent that has come out of that league and have done really well and established themselves on the world stage at the moment. And the Belgium League is a very good conveyor belt for these young talents to come through and come out. And you're finding more young talent is going into the Belgium League, learning their basics and then coming out into these big clubs. And I think Van der Voort, he's already playing for the Belgium under-21s and he's looking to be fast-tracked into the Belgium squad already as a 19-year-old. Belgium rate him very highly, and I think he would. He is good enough at the moment. You look at his stats, he is good enough to uh, hold his own against the likes of Bettinelli, against the likes of Kepa. I think Kepa will win 12 bumps. He will probably leave, so there is where the space opens up. And I think against Bettinelli, who, let's be honest, he, he is here to... The reason Chelsea bought him is because he fits the homegrown quota. He fits another English player in the team. Um, so not, I don't not necessarily to be the second keeper? No, I just don't. I, I think you look at Bettinelli in his last previous months. He's been at championship clubs and he's been regarded as one of the worst goalkeepers in the championship. So if he's not statistically doing well in the championship, I don't think, I, I just think his time, even his time at Fulham, he wasn't, he was okay. But he wasn't that great, so I think he's he's a keeper that is just at the twilight of his years, and he's just looking to get the paycheck of being making a bit of money and just sitting on the sideline at a big club where eventually you'll probably win a trophy or two. 
Yeah, that makes great sense. And uh, I sure we're talking about the talent that Anderlecht and Gang produce. I was going to say there's something that come with players that they produce some measure of arrogance or you say confidence. I don't know how I support. They produce good players who have confidence in what they can do. Confident, you know. So I'm thinking if that's really the case, that's just my own judgment from my own perspective. The way I see things, I don't think uh, uh, Martin Van der Voort will be content with coming to Chelsea and sitting on the bench. But that's by the way, because we've talked about him and you've told me how good he is and I've checked it myself. He's really good. And that's why in my queuing, I don't think that he'd be content to come to Chelsea and sit on the bench for even Kepari Zavalaga. And also from the club's perspective, they want to sell Kepa and get some size and get at least a sizable fee from his soul. It means he has to play games to show what he can do. So that creates another problem for Martin, should he come to Chelsea. But like I said, that's by the way. Let's just move to his statistics. And I hope Chelsea gets him because the moment you and I had a discussion about him, I had to go look him up and see how good he is and how good he was, especially last this past season. And I really do want him. But I've checked it also and I could see that there are some you could call it stumbling uh, blocks that because he's going to see things from his own, that is development. He's, he want to, when he want, we want to be starting games. And like I said, gangs and elect, they produce one of the best talents in Europe and they produce players with some measure of, you could say ar arrogance or that believe in their, in their, in their abilities. And they don't take no, in most cases, they don't, they hate playing second fiddle to people. They move on. We, prime examples will be uh, Hazard Junior, uh, De Bruyne, uh, Lukaku himself. They were all from the same club, weren't they? Yeah. So you should, uh, yes, exactly. So it seems like a pattern. They produce players who are good and confident in their abilities and wouldn't want to play second fiddle to anybody, no matter how good you are. So let's go to his statistic, Matt and see if his statistics for the viewer's sake, because I've looked at it myself and I know you've looked at it yourself, but for the viewer's sake, or uh, my followers and your followers who will get to watch this video, let's look at the statistics and see how he compares to the goalkeepers we have and whether his statistics justifies, justify how good you say, you've said he is and how good I know I've seen he is. Yeah, so I'll obviously the stats I am judging off will be off last season. Obviously, they have the Belgium League has started already and have played four games, but it's it's been a bit of a uh, transition season for Genk. So I would I would say his stats this season do not really reflect the quality of him because Genk's defense is well, it was a shambles last season. This season, it's been even more of a shambles. But um, last season, Van der Waal played thirty four games. Um, I mean, you could argue, I didn't mean to cut you off. You could argue that we were able to see how good he can be because he he played with a bad defence. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah. this th this season, there's bad defences and then there's oh, this, there's this gank defence. It's, it's possibly one that it makes Arsenal look good at defending. That's how bad it is. <laughs> um, but so, yeah, last season, uh, Van der Waal played 34 games uh, and he... Uh, conceded a total of 49 goals, which was amounts to 1.3 goals per game. He's kept seven clean sheets, which doesn't sound a lot, but again, this gank defence, the the whole team, it's you uh, as you've seen from a number of players that play there, they look to score outscore their opponents. So it's they will score more, or the other team will score more, um, as you've seen from probably some of his, their results this season. Mm -hmm. um, he has a save percentage of 72%. Um, he That's has a passing. Bad. That's that's pretty good. That's one of the best mm -hmm. for his for someone in his age bracket. I think he looked. Up, I think there was only one keeper under the age of twenty two that had a better save percentage, and that was Juan Juan Luigi Don Donnarumma. And obviously, Donnarumma is at the moment he's a different level. He's played for five years since he was yeah. sixteen, so obviously he's way up in the develop la development ladder than anyone else. So, in terms of young goalkeepers, he is one of the best around. He also has a passing accuracy of 80%. He's a very good passer of the ball. Wow. Whether it's short passes or long passes, the percentage stays high in both. Um, 
He's had one error leading to goal, which was I wouldn't even I, I, I've watched it myself because I I didn't believe it was really an error because it was one of them situations where he's passed out to a defender, the defender wasn't even looking, so the strikers intercepted it and then gone round him and scored. Which for me, he's made the pass, which yeah maybe the pass wasn't the best, but the defender wasn't didn't have a clue what was going on. So I I would wouldn't, would even regard that as a proper error, but. There you go. That's what the stats are saying. So I'll just take it. Um, in terms of what his strengths are, he is known at being a very good shot stopper. So despite his height, which is actually only one centimeter taller than Kepa, so everyone says about Kepa's height is bad. But the difference I, fi- I feel between him and Van der Voort is Van der Voort, he uses his body very well and he's a very good shot stopper. His technique in saving shots is absolutely fantastic he will he will get to shots you do not think it is humanly possible to get to and that's why belgium and a lot of clubs have looked at this kid and gone he is he will be the real deal because obviously he is 19 he has still got a lot of growth and a lot of development to go through whether it's maybe not so much the height but the built bulking out a little bit more improving his strength and really developing as a goalkeeper but already his shot stopping is unbelievable in terms of weaknesses, there hasn't really been any weaknesses that have been found, um, which is uh, good to see. Um, currently, in terms of just looking at trophies, he has three trophies already as a 19-year-old. He has one Belgium League Championship. He has one Belgium Cup and one Belgium Super Cup. Um, now, obviously, they're all good stats, but what I'll do now is I'll compare it to our current goalkeepers. Yeah, because... before, you, before you compare them, Matt... See my point here. I really love that kid. Look how many trophies he's won at just 19. And look at his statistics. Pass accuracy, 84. And that's that's pivotal to the way we play. We love goalkeepers that are good with their feet. That's why I'm afraid that I don't see us getting this kid and him coming to Chelsea to play second field or even to Eduardo Mendy because he's that good. You, you get my argument right now. Well, I, I hope I mean, we'll get him. I hope we'll get him. But I, I I see it as very, very difficult because he would think that once we get him, we'll send him out on loan. Except if the club will get him and say, okay, continue your development at Gank. Once the opportunity comes, we'll bring you back in to be our number one. Or maybe the route of uh, Tibo Cut, where hopefully he doesn't turn out to be to uh, portray the character, that, you know, become Thibaut Courtois in terms of character. Maybe the route of Thibaut Courtois go out on loan somewhere else like Thibaut did to Atletico Madrid and something like that. This kid is so good. I'm still, I have chills to think about how much, look at how much he's achieved at just 19 and you still believe we could get him? We'll get to that. So continue, Matt. Yeah, so obviously I, I will. I have got a little argument for that. I think there is a development plan for uh, Van der Voort, but we'll get into that in a little bit. I mean, so compare. We will, he's got good stats, so that's good enough. But well, let's compare it to see how he fares against our current goalkeepers. Now with Kepa, obviously last season he didn't have too many games. So what I've done is I've got the stats up from last season and the season before, just for a comparison. So. In the 2019-20 season, uh, Kepa played 33 games, which was one less game than um, Van der Voort. He conceded an average of 1.4 shots per game, so similar ratio, not too much difference. But who, obviously, who's got the better ratio? Uh, Van der Voort by 0.1. But obviously, okay. bearing in mind, this is a Chelsea team compared to a very leaky defence of Genk. Um Last in 2019-2020, he only uh, Kepa only set, didn't save any of the two penalties compared to Van der Voort's two out of five, which is pretty good for again for a goalkeeper. Kepa's save percentage in 2019-2020 was only 54 percent. And if I look at, at uh, passing, similar passing around 80, which is fine. We all know Kepa can pass the ball. Okay, yeah. uh, Kepa Kepa only got eight clean sheets. And he had a total of four errors leading to goals in 1920, which I haven't seen a figure that high for a goalkeeper when I've looked at stats comparing goalkeepers around. Um, 
if you look at his season last season, obviously he only played seven games, so it's a bit hard to judge the stats. But he had uh, only one point. He only conceded one point one goals per game. Obviously, we'll put this into perspective. This was under Tuchel, and at the time we weren't conceding anything. Where, where the, whether it was Kepa or Mendy in goal, uh, he had one penalty that he didn't save. He had a save percentage of still, even though we were very resolute defence, he only had a 67% percentage. So Kepa's still not even getting up to Van der Voort's level, even under Tuchel. Uh, and his pass accuracy was similar. Uh, he had two clean sheets in them seven games. And then he had the one error leading to the goal, which unfortunately that happened in the cup final when it most mattered. So it's a bit unfortunate for Kepa that happened. But yeah, he had a better season. But what you can see is he's vastly yeah, underwhelming. Uh, let's, let's address this. The error you were talking about was in the game against uh, Leicester City. Yeah. Do you, do you really think it was his fault? Again, I, 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 I wouldn't really class that as an error. But if, if they're classing the error leading to goal for the one with Van der Voort, I'd argue. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call that. Uh, I wouldn't fault uh, Kepa on that. Uh, what's his name? The guy that's called that screamer. Because he had the whole space. He had the yeah. whole world to shoot. What were our midfielders doing? And even our defenders, nobody closed him up. So he had this chance to shoot in the first place. And Kepa stretched as much as he can. I wouldn't blame him, but that's by the way. Go ahead with uh, your, your presentation, Matt. Yeah, so obviously we, we've gone through the stats for Kepa and it just shows that Kepa is, Van der Voort is highly, is just in most areas, is just better than Kepa. Even in what you would regard his best form at Chelsea, he's not he's not been up to the standard of what Van der Voort is producing for a much worse team and a team that he's getting peppered by because their defence is poor. I mean, even comparing to Mendy, obviously we we've, we would re, we would regard Mendy as a fantastic goalkeeper last season, one of the best in Europe. Uh, Mendy had 31 games. Uh, he had goals per game. He only conceded 0 0.8, which is why I think Mendy is a fantastic goalkeeper. Even for Van der Voort, Van der Voort's not getting near that. But we'd argue defences are worlds apart in terms of quality so that might uh affect the result uh mendy he saved one out of three penalties um which i would argue the one he did save was that aguero one which was possibly one of the worst penalties i've seen um so judge that the way you will and obviously it's been known that mendy is not the best goalkeeper at saving penalties especially even compared to kepper so that's obviously something. It's not. I, I wouldn't blame a goalkeeper because penalties are hard to save as a goalkeeper. So that's just one of them things. Uh, Men, uh, Mendy's save percentage last season was seventy percent. So even Mendy had a lower save percentage than Van der Voort last season, which is a massive surprise. When I saw that stat, so, I saying, was so sorry. Mendy had a better save percentage than Van der Voort. No, Mark Van der Voort had a better one. Had a better save percentage than Mendy, Go which, ahead. which and he surprised had more shots me. against him. Yeah, which which surprised me massively. I I was expecting Mendy to app to to beat him in this one, but he didn't. Yeah, and, expect, I, yeah. that, and that surprises me. Obviously, Mendy's passing again around in the eighty percent, so it's um, much better, much the same as both all three goalkeepers. Which I think is just a thing of Chelsea. Chelsea get who's better. Uh, I think it Mendy is worse by one percent, so it's basically very similar. The same, uh, Mendy does have 16 clean sheets. Obviously, that is again, you look at that and that you regard that as Mendy had a very good defense behind him, which helped him with that. But yes. nonetheless, it's a fantastic achievement. And compared to Van der Voort, it's vastly superior. But even Mendy, even Mendy and Van der Voort, they're producing similar stats, so you could argue Van der Voort at 19 is at that level to compete certainly with Kepa and even in the next few years of Mendy now going so, into yeah. go um, ahead go ahead i was going to say in terms of the whole development aspect which is the big bearing question about whether we should sign him personally i i look at it as 
obviously Kepa has to leave for Van der Voort to have a space in the club. So Yes, I, I, I agree with you. And when we talked about it, I said for Kepa to leave, he has to be playing more games. So you just came back to what we talked about before. For us to be able to sign Van der Voort, Kepa has to leave first. And that's not as easy as snapping our fingers. We know how difficult it is. We paid £70 million pounds for him. So to get a sizable fee, he'd have to play more games. That's I'm really hated that the situation is like this because I want this kid at, at Chelsea. Honestly, I do. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Matt. Go ahead. Yeah. So I, I think there is going to be a situation where we are going to have to wait maybe one or two years to sell cap. Mm. But I think where... Martin van der Voort's value is so low at the moment. It's only he's only yeah, value. We'll, we'll talk four. about that. We'll, we'll come to that. We'll Where come is, to that. Let's not give it away right now. Yeah. Where his value is very surprising. I'll just I'll just leave it at that for the viewers. Yes. It's it's a value Chelsea can just go in and get now. And what you would do to the player is you would say to the player, right, we do need to get rid of Kepa, and we will look to do that in the future. But what we want to do with you is because you're young and we want you to improve on your game time, we will give Chelsea can give him a number of loans, which again, like you said, he may go back. We may send, we could send him back to Genk for one more season and let him develop again with the same team and grow. But I think we can, we Chelsea as a club, we have such a vast amount of youth players and we have such an experience in loaning players out. Obviously we don't get it right every time, but, Players like Reese James, Mason Mount have gone on fantastic loans and they've come back three, four times the better player for it. So if you if we can send Martin on one or two loan spells for a, a while Kepa's not while we're trying to sell Kepa, Van, Van der Voort can get that experience at multiple clubs in multiple leagues and grow more than what you'd argue he does just staying in Genk at, uh, in Belgium. Um and he can be under a club where He's constantly getting improvements. He's constantly working with the Chelsea coaches, Chelsea scouts to work to improve his game as well as being at that club. And then when Kepper eventually is sold, because it will happen eventually, we'll have to lower his contract down. But once he eventually Kepper will go and you think about the situation with Mendy where he has got AFCON, Martin van der Voort will actually get quite a lot of games as a second choice goalkeeper. So you think... He will likely play all the Champions League group stage, unless we've got a uh, Barcelona, Real Madrid. So that's likely about six games. You've got the situation in Afcon, the six weeks, where in this season he'd play three games, plus an FA Cup, two FA Cup games, plus possibly depending on how far we get, two Carabao Cup games. Because the way Tuchel likes to run his keepers, he plays his keepers all the way through the Cups. Maybe he won't play him in the final, but you look at Kepa, he even played Kepa in the final of the FA Cup. So it's one of them things, Van der Voort could easily get up to 15, 20 games, even as just being a second choice goalkeeper, which at, which is in, in all schemes of things, it isn't actually that bad for a, young, that a player that young. So you look at Mendy, Mendy is into just turned 30. So he's going into his 30s, You'd say Mendy's got five, six years tops in terms of being a first choice goalkeeper. By then, Van der Voort gets his turns 25 and goes straight into his prime at Chelsea. Starts to get into where you'd want Van der Voort to be to be playing consistent game time. So there is it's the perfect step over where the the apprentice becomes the master. And that's what that's what Van der Voort should be able to achieve. I think Chelsea can provide a good enough package and a good enough progression chart that he will see that and go, I want to join this club. Yeah, great, great uh, argument right there. But there's something I want to bring to mind, Matt. It's not about the age. It's about the pedigree. If it's the age, we'll be talking just about his development. But this guy at 19... He's won how many trophies? He's Free got trophies. a pedigree. Exactly. So he has a good pedigree enough at 19. The age doesn't really matter at this point. What a player who's achieved so much at 19 
and as good as he is, that brings us to the next question. The statistics prove that he's good enough to play for Chelsea. He's better than, numbers don't lie. So you could say he's better than uh, Kipari Zabalaga, right? From what, what we read. Yeah. I mean, you have got to consider that there is a step up between the Belgium league and no, it doesn't. Let's put that aside. We, we disrespect that league so much. We don't seem to take into account the talent they produced. If that league is not good enough, how are they producing those talents? Those talents step up to other leagues and they do well. They don't falter yeah. in most cases. Yeah. So let's let's throw away that the rubbish of saying the Belgian league, the difference between that and the Premier League. No, he faces shots that people shoot with their boots, laced up properly. There's no difference in the way they shoot at the end of Belgium League and then the way they shoot in the Premier League. The boy is good enough. But that's, by the way, now we've seen, yes, statistics prove he's better than Kipari Zubalaga, not minding the league. In some aspects, actually, he's better than uh, Eduardo Mendy. So, Matt, that brings us to the question now. Would he want to join Chelsea? for any, any other reason, because you can't tell me he would want to come to Chelsea to play second field to even even Mendy, let alone Kepari Zavalaga or Bettinelli. Do you think he would want to come to Chelsea if you feel so? Can you tell us, tell me, tell the viewers, your own followers, my followers and the Chelsea fan base, why you think he still would want to come to Chelsea? Yeah, I mean, I think... Obviously, it, it's a situation where Chelsea would have to work very hard to give a convincing package to Matt Van der Voort to say this is why this is why you should come to our club. But I think the way the way Chelsea work with young players, it's not just like he's a it's a big club, he's going to win trophies, etc. But the way, like how the Belgium league bring through a lot of young players. Chelsea are now a club that they work with young players and they bring through a lot of young players very well. You've got you know look if if I was if I was a Chelsea person if I was if I was Marina trying to persuade Van der Voort, I would go and just list Reese James, Mason Mount, even now Trevor Shalabar, multiple Tammy Abraham before he left, multiple players who have got lots of chances at Chelsea Football Club uh, and and they've been trusted even though they are young players. Chelsea Football Club is one of the only big clubs in the world where you get to you get you young they have the f- combination of big players like Romelu Lukaku and young players such as Reese James who fill in spots and become very good players. No other, no other big club in the world compares to that. No big club gives young players the opportunity. Chelsea does. Now, Van der Voort could easily move to a, a, a medium-sized club, a club like Rennes or a club like Lille, because a lot of the Belgian players do tend to look to go to France because it's so close. Um, he could do that, and he could play another couple of years and then get a big move when he's 24, 25 for a big fee, for a big transfer fee. But to do it, to, to, to come to Chelsea, a, cl- a club that brings through youth players and is confident and knows the way to bring youth players through now, to st- you'll be able to stick at one club. Obviously, you go to clubs on loan, but you Chelsea know how to get you the right experience in the right place. They will take your development path and they will get it. They will use it to their best of their ability because he could realistically, he could go to a Rens on a permanent deal. Rens, they could struggle with their um, recruitment. They could struggle with their manager and they could drop places. And when you are a goalkeeper like that, you can't, you, you will be scapegoated with that you will go down with the ship and Understood. that could easily happen at a place like Red. whereas if you're at Chelsea say you could go on loan say he, Chelsea got he goes yeah he's at Chelsea he goes on loan to Ren that happens 
He yeah. has the safety yeah. bracket of coming back to Chelsea. Chelsea know that he is a very good goalkeeper and then he can go, he can move on to another loan spell and he can get that experience while being under the roof of Chelsea who have produced some of the best goalkeepers in the world. He look he can follow the reins of Pet Cech. He can also follow the reins of Thibaut Courtois. I know Thibaut Courtois had some problems with Chelsea in the past and Chelsea fans resented him for it now. But he can look at that and go, well, can I do what Courtois didn't? That would that that would be that would be my motivation for him. Do what Courtois couldn't do. Courtois couldn't couldn't stay, couldn't get here and couldn't break himself into the team. For one reason or another, family issues, he wanted to always go to Real Madrid. But one more thing that I'm gonna clarify. Van der Voort has said that he is a big fan of the Premier League and wants to play there. So there's mm. already that there's already that hunger to play in the Premier League. And why not do it in a club where so many Belgian players, people like Eden Hazard, Lukaku, Kevin, even Kevin De Bruyne, I know he didn't stay there for long, but prob- all his role models in terms of getting to that Belgian team have one, for one at one point or another played at Chelsea Football Club. The Chelsea Football Club is a big part of Belgian football. And I think yeah. we can, I think the overall package, I think we can persuade it. It would be hard, but I think we can persuade Van der Voort. And if we do, I think we're going to be successful with it. Yeah, you make a very good argument on how we can persuade him to come join us. He could just join us, go out and loan somewhere else, keep developing, and then come back as a first thing goalkeeper because Mendy himself tops five, six years or even less. It depends on how well he does uh, this coming season and, and the subsequent seasons. And Chelsea also wants to sell Kepar as a Balaga, no matter how well he does. He's been a big problem for the club to get rid of. Um, I'm not condemning him, condemning Kepar by any means necessary. He's a good keeper, but he has issues that we don't seem to. It, it doesn't look like he's going to overcome, um, or the uh, people don't overlook. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for taking some time to explain that. Uh, yeah, he would want to ch- join Chelsea. I agree, but it, uh, he must know that there's some quite some stumbling blocks to navigate, and uh, hopefully it's possible because I do love the kid, like I've mentioned before. So, Matt, coming to his market value, how much is his market value? Well, th- this is the part that excites me the most <laughs> on transfer market, which is a quite value, quite uh, reliable source for market values obviously this will increase but with the belgium league you can pick out gems very cheaply Le uh, congo only went to arsenal for 12 million pounds that was a steal in itself but the value for martin van der voort is four million euros that's not even pounds so four that million goes... euros so in pounds it will be like three point yeah about 3.2 3.3 million pounds that wow. that is about three months of Lukaku's wages. Wow. Three four months of Lukaku's wages. That is that is a that is a one p for Roman Abramovich. That is a penny. That is a dime for Roman Abramovich. It's nothing. As good as the boy is, three four million euros. I, I must tell you, is an absolute steal. And hopefully, we're looking at him. I do believe usually because. You can argue Chelsea look at Genk a lot and Andalek, so they probably must know about him and uh, making moves behind the scenes. I hope that is the case. Matt, I sincerely do appreciate you bringing Martin van der Voort in front of the Chelsea fans and the board. Maybe they will get to hear, see this video or hear about the board. The kid is really good. When I looked at the statistics, I got chills over me and how much how many trophies is won at just 19. That doesn't happen all the time. I think we should make a move for him. If he doesn't want to come right away, he could remain there or go out on loan to other clubs. And like in France, usually like Belgian players do the switch from France. It looks like they prefer uh, the switch from France to uh, Belgium to France, so to speak. 
I really do want that kid at our club because I think he has a good, good future in front of him. Matt, I, I can't thank you enough for this scouting episode. It has been a great one. And please take some time to tell, tell the viewers and whoever get, that gets to see this video about Worldwide Charles Podcast and uh, where they can find you to listen to your content. I've listened, I've started listening myself and it's good. It's really, really an excellent podcast and I urge my followers to please go check it out. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah, so obviously it's now season two of the Worldwide Shells pod. Um, we're looking to improve. We're looking to really grow in strides. Obviously you can find us at Worldwide Shells pod on either Spotify we can find us on Apple Podcast. If you are on Apple Podcast, we're looking to get some feedback and reviews. So drop us a review, drop us a five star if you love it, and comment comment down. Tell us what we need to improve on. Tell us what we're doing well, and we can work to improve it over time because that's what we're really looking to do over the next few months, especially now that I'm working. I can uh, buy some equipment to make it better. We finally, we had this year long where we had this clicking sound when you listen to the pod and it's gone we've fixed it so hopefully that stays fixed but you can find it on spotify you can find it on apple you can also follow us on twitter at wwc pod articles there you'll find all our podcasts that we post and you can also find the articles that me and a couple of the members of the team write. so we cover previews and reviews for both the men's and the women's we'll write transfer roundups every week to round up all the review all the transfer rumors and confirmed deals over the last week we also do some analysis video uh some analysis articles on certain players like van der Voort. i have got an article on van der Voort that i will be looking to post in the next few weeks and we do look to just provide good content and obviously we are looking uh to bring a lot of more guests on this year um coachilla will definitely be on in the next few weeks so stay tuned for that it'll be a very good debate we're also looking now to extend it to um opposition fans coming on as well so we're going to kind of really get the get the anti going tomorrow we've got an arsenal fan coming on so hopefully we'll be able to have a little bit of banter with them and it, it, it's going to be a very good it's going to be a very good podcast carry on listening you can you can listen to it anyway you can listen to it while you're in the shower while you're in the car to work while you're eating your dinner or you're cooking you can watch it anywhere. That's the beauty of podcasts. Videos, you have to have YouTube. You have to have a good signal. It destroys your data. But a podcast, all you have to do is download it and you can watch it wherever you want. And I would recommend it. Yes, thank you very much for taking the time to tell us more what we need to know about uh, the Worldwide Charles podcast. And I urge my followers, please go check it and you will thank me later. And you have the man's uh, Twitter handle on the screen. I will also provide complete information about the Worldwide Charles podcast and also a link to the article that Matt talked about, about Martin van der Waal, because it's relevant to this video. So you can also go check it out. So more importantly, please don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and also click on the bell notification button so you don't miss anything. Matt, again, like I said, it's been an absolute pleasure presenting this episode of Scouting for Chelsea on Chelsea Perspective with you. It is a great one, and I know people are going to love it. Thank you again, my friend. But again, thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure to come on this great channel. And hopefully you grow very, a lot this season because you deserve it. You've got great content. It's unique. It's brilliant. And I can't, I, I can't stop watching it. I, I watch it and I, I sometimes I repeat it because it's that good. Thank you. I appreciate that, Matt. And hopefully we'll grow together and I'll keep talking about your podcast because I, like I told you, I've listened to, I started listening to it and I sincerely do love it and will preach it to my followers and to my friends. Thank you very much, Matt. See you again. See ya.